friends, we have before us what's called by scholars some hard sayings. The reader was a bit distressed that he had to read this, didn't know what to do with it, and perhaps the same for you as you read these words. You didn't want to have to say that. We know Jesus as Prince of Peace and the one who brings us unconditional love and who has come to save and not judge. What is this about? You know, these past years I've been trying to help you decode so much of this divine wisdom. Well, this is a decoding squared, if you will. In other words, I'm going to show you how the very opposite of what you think it means is what it is. It's complicated math, but it has to be that way. So fear not, this is not another Jesus. This is not a demand that is against your deepest instincts taught from the beginning about this faith, this love, this goodness. This is just intense teaching. He says, I have come to bring division. And yet we all know that underlying it all, he has come to bring unity. Unity with God, that they may all be one. Don't we know that one? And he's telling us here, paradoxically, how we have to become one, how we go about finding that oneness. So he tells us about the vision. In Matthew, he says, I've come to bring a sword. And yet we know how non-violent he is. We know how true spirituality is non-violent. How he healed the ear of the servant of the centurion who came to take him away at Gethsemane. When Peter tried to defend him, cut off his ear. He healed the man who was going to torture him. So we have to know that we're dealing with special meaning here. Not a different Jesus. Just a complicated Jesus. Trying to get through to us at a deeper level. To bring a sword. A sword that divides, first of all, within. As we dare to come to know ourselves, then surely you know that that's part of the package. From the beginning, know thyself. We have to divide and decide who's going to run the show. The part of you that is without interest in God whatsoever, or the part of you that wants to make that super effort to go against the grain, to be able to forgive or not have the last word, to accept the unacceptable sometimes, to trust in God when there seems to be no reason. All those things so hard to do. Jesus has brought a sword to separate out so that we can focus fully on that part of our humanity that has a chance to awaken to God. And so as we hear this division, not as superficial separation, we can better understand why he says these shocking words about father against son. You know, if you take that home literally, all you can do is create a grim religion. And especially when you understand that in that ancient time, the family was especially important. Especially important, not even like today. The family was your identity. Even Jesus was known as Yeshua Ba Joseph, Jesus, son of Joseph. There was no public welfare. If you had no family to help you, that was it. It was all important. And the authority of the parent was a sacred thing. And so he is blaspheming seemingly against all that the chosen people believe. 
But would you believe that he is doing that so that we can get in touch with a deeper love? We don't leave it at that. He wants us to get into contact with that love of God. That is very much more than the love of family. We can all love family. We can all love the people who love us. And you know very well what he said about that. What good does that do if you then hate somebody else? That's not love, that's tribalism. So he is blasting through our normal human psychology to put us in touch with a deeper love or a higher love if you wish of that God who will then allow you through that fire within that melts and molds you that makes you new a new creation like we sing so often that allows you to love your family even better we all know that we can't take for granted that families love each other. It'd be lovely if that were the case, like the TV shows of the 50s. But we know there are a lot of wounds. We know people in their 60s still suffering from what was done to them, the mistakes. We know Thanksgiving dinners can be stories. We all have the buttons that get pushed when we're with family. But if you approach it with another picture in mind, with God's love in your heart, then you can understand, you can forgive, you can let go. Who still hasn't let go of anger after decades? You can have mercy. That is what he is saying. So it is completely different than what it looks like. And that's why religion can get very complicated and very strange. Because if you take it just on the surface, what are you going to do with it? I know some folks who left family because that's what it says. When in fact it is love your family with a deeper love because you are a person now who loves out of God's love. So this division is a complicated matter. We all know families where some people believe and some don't. We know sometimes that there is no meeting ground whatsoever, even in the same bloodlines. We know that we can be closer to someone whose understanding of God is like ours. We can be more of a brother or sister to them than to our own because there is this glorious common understanding. So that's another dimension of division. It is impossible to expect everybody to accept how you think, to respect what you think. And you must go beyond family to that which is ultimate and stand firm in your faith. Regardless, it is inevitable that somewhere there will be conflict. And then he goes on to the signs of the time. So we go from this new understanding that division is actually meant to bring us to true unity. We go from there to the signs of the time. And he speaks about things that the folks he was talking to understood. A cloud in the west meant that from the Mediterranean in the west, rain was coming. As I told the folks in chapel, I learned the hard way that when you're close to the ocean, it rains a lot. Rain comes from there. They all knew that. They all knew that in the south, that 
Wind coming up from the south was going to be hot because down there was the Sahara Desert. And he uses these humble, simple examples to show that if we know these things, these simple realities, how can we not know the signs of the deeper realities? For example, how can we not know that the violence in our world, the horrors we see on television, are signs of our present time? How can we not know that being politically correct and removing God from everything is a sign of the time? How can we not know that what is needed to heal this world are people who will live this teaching out? This is why church cannot be a Mickey Mouse affair, an old habit you've had. This is urgent and serious today in 2013. And it doesn't matter if we're not overflowing with people. We live in a world that has turned its back on God. Know the signs, like that cloud in the sky, the farmer knows it's going to rain. You know that we live in a secular society, which means that your role, your faith is all the more important. God needs a few good people and it doesn't take too many. Jesus was fine with 12 disciples. He didn't need 1,200. 12 disciples who changed the world, changed world history. So however we grow, which of course is a delight for us, it is the strength of our faith, the standing firm in God's love, despite everything else the overcoming our differences, the unifying of our ability to care for each other and for others that is going to change the world today. It may not change it globally, but if you are conscious of our times, you know how important this is. This is not a prelude to lunch. How many churches are all about going to lunch after church and putting up with the preacher while he's babbling until he's done? I say to you today that the Christ is calling you to see the signs of right now, the present time, and how critical it is that each of us, in our own way, Commit to being true to the teachings of Christ. Commit to the path. Make the effort to go against the grain of our natural selfish ways. Enabling us to be instruments of blessing in a world that so desperately needs it. Now more than ever. In any way you can. So be aware of the importance of your role in this life. Now, whoever you are, even if you can't get out of a chair, you're important if you shine with the goodness of God. So friends, this teaching is hard because it's instruction. It's telling us this is not easy, that we will be rejected. But fear not, I have conquered the world. Jesus wants us to be courageous and strong and needs us now to live out our faith truly and incarnate the fact that we are children of light here for a mighty purpose.